Hey, glad you stopped by. Now, real quick before we get started, for those of you that don't have one yet, this video references a website from my-real-estate-website.com. Uh, you can get one by going to this web address and clicking the little sign up button. And then any links or other downloadable content that I mentioned during this video can be found on its blog post. So if you're watching it on YouTube or some other video website like that, go ahead and click that link in the description and that'll take you to the right place. And this video was recorded uh, for YouTube high def. So if the text looks all jagged and goofy or anything like that, you can click the HD icon in the bottom right corner that should improve the quality for you quite a bit. That's me, I'm Jason Massingale. There are a few of the ways you can get a hold of me. Uh, I like communicating with text message, so if you're into that kind of thing too, then definitely feel free to shoot me a text anytime. But more importantly, if you have any questions about this video or how to do something on your website, the best thing you can do is leave me a comment. Um, enough for all that intro stuff though, let's go ahead and get into this thing now. Now let's talk about adding a property to your real estate website. But before we get into the details of it, there are a few things that you should already know how to do. One of those is finding a property on Google Maps. Another one is finding an aerial or a bird's eye view on Bing Maps. Then you should also have Jing be installed on your computer and you should kind of have a basic understanding of how to do a screenshot. Now on the Google Maps and the Bing Maps, I'm actually going to go to those websites in this video and just show you real quickly how I do the screenshot. But as for Jing, that's something you should already have installed and you should already know how to use it. If you go to our support homepage right here, under the Working with My Real Estate Website category, you'll see a link for Capture Screenshots for My Real Estate Website. In that video, I'll show you where to find Jing and how to use it. Now those are the three things that you should have an understanding of, but they don't have to be done before you start adding the property to your website. Personally, I think adding the maps and the aerial photo or the bird's eye view photo are easier if you just do it while you're actually creating the post itself because then you can just copy and paste without worrying about messing up addresses or anything like that. Now what should be done already before you start adding the post at all or adding the property at all to your website is the photo should already be edited. And once again on our support homepage there's another video there. Edit properties for my real estate website. In that video I show you where to find Picasa, which is the program I recommend. Then I show you how to add the photos to Picasa and how to edit them and make them the right size and the right aspect ratio and all that good stuff. So just a quick recap, here's a checklist of stuff that should be done. The property photo should already be prepared, that means they're edited and resized. Jing is installed. You should have the listing details on hand, you know, just the stuff that you put in the MLS. If there is a virtual tour for the property, you should know where that is and you should be able to get the URL to that or the web address for that. Then you should also have an understanding of doing screen captures with Jing. Then there's also a PDF that you can download right from this page. You've got real simple instructions to walk you through each step of the process. Then anywhere we've got the video link here, that means that we've got a video cover that specific topic. Now let's go ahead and head over to the website dashboard. Okay, we're logged in. We're going to add a new post. And we're just going to follow these step-by-step -step instructions here. We're going to add the post information. So that's the title, the description, and the excerpt. For the title, I like to use a property address. And I don't use the city and state on this part. Come down here. Add the description. Then the excerpt is what shows up on different pages of the website that link to this property page. So you just add some kind of brief description right there. Now let's head back over to the PDF and see what's next. Now we select a category for it. This is going to be a home for sale, so we're going to put it there. Featured homes for sale. Now in the property features section, we add the property details. So let's do that. Alright, so there we go. I just paused it and added all those property details in right there. Step 6 is add the directions and add a link to the Google Map directions. So we'll come over here and add the directions. Then we'll head over to Google Maps and grab a screenshot of the map. So we found our property, then we zoom to the right level that we want. We come over here and click Capture. 
then draw our square 300 pixels wide by 250 pixels tall. Got that there, then we can just drag inside here anywhere we want to. Then we click capture image. I'm just going to save it as a map. And this is our demo photos. We'll put it right there with the other exported photos that have already been fixed. And we're not done here yet. Now we need to get the URL, so we'll go to link. This top link right here is the one we want. I'm just going to hit Control C to copy, or you could select copy this way. We'll go back to our property page and paste Control V, the URL right there. And we'll swing over to our Bing Maps and get that one. We've already got the bird's eye view right there that I want. Hit Control Shift J, that's the shortcut for Jing. 300 pixels wide by 250 pixels tall. And then we will capture it. I'm going to name this one Ariel and save it. Now we also need to get the URL for this one, so I'll click Share. That's my link right there. I'm going to Control C to copy it again. Over here on the Ariel URL, we're going to hit Control V. Then if you have the virtual tour URL, go ahead and do that also. I'm just going to put a pound here for now. And step seven is select the post type. Now there are two types of posts that you can do. You can do a wide property post, which is this one. And that's what that one looks like. And the regular property post is this one, which just allows you to keep the sidebar of your blog there. It's got all the same information. It's just compacted in a little bit more. And that setting is selected right here. We'll go to the wide property post. And then step eight is add the property tag. That is property photo, exactly like that. No spaces, and then the P on photo is capitalized there. Then check boxes for the appropriate display boxes. We're going to add the showing box, the directions box, the aerial box, the virtual tour box, and the more info box. Then upload the photos. We're gonna come right here to this add an image icon. We're going to add them from the computer and select the files. And this is the folder that has all the photos in it that I'm looking for. You can click the first one and hold down shift while you click the last one. It connects everything in between. Then it goes through and uploads and crunches them all. Now for every property photo, we need to go through and select that property photo box. For the aerial photo, it's going to be aerial. And for the main photo, it's going to be bigger than the rest of them. We're going to select property photo and primary. Then select map for our map photo. We're going to save all changes and then close this window. And that's it. Now all we have to do is publish it and it will be live on our website. And something I skipped over was adding captions to these photos right here. So let's go back and do that real quick. Now if we click media library it's going to show us all the media in our entire library. If we click gallery it's only going to show us the media for this post. So now we're on this page we can click show and under caption. Then we do that same thing with all the other photos. And once we're done we click Save Changes. We'll close that. Alright, I hope this video was useful. Uh, here, there's my info one more time if you want to get in touch with me. Alright, what I want you to do now is just let me know what you think about it. You know, If it sucked, let me know that. If it's good, let me know. And if you liked it enough that you want to be notified when we add new stuff, then go ahead and click that pretty little gold subscribe button up there to the right. Then you'll get an email anytime we add new stuff. Take care. Talk soon.